good morning all today we will be discussing about the economy weekly current affairs topics that had sur- uh, surfaced in uh, various newspapers and also the uh, most important things from upsc perspective so uh, so whatever had happened in the last week from 9th january to 15th january we will be covering today so coming to the topics which i am going to cover so uh, we will be going through almost 11 topics so the topics on priority wise as well as on the basis of uh, dates so first topic was but uh, is pertaining to 2024 polls and subsidy impact and how government is going to focus on subsidy and to rationalize subsidy that thing we will be covering next thing will be so the last budget before polls will be the 2023 budget so the likely focus more will be on rural uh, expenditure so regarding that also some facts we will be dealing next thing is india is contemplating especially central government is contemplating a pli scheme to promote it hardware with ip designed in india this is especially regarding the focus is regarding uh, semiconductor chips and other things because now we want to become global hub for semiconductor chips especially like how taiwan had become a hub for uh, semiconductor chip foundries in the same manner we are going to focus so that's why we uh, government is thinking to have a strong it hardware with ip intellectual property rights designed in india to promote a pli scheme next is coal utilization to rise due to missed renewable targets so we had a target of around 170 gigawatts but we are able to achieve only 60 to 70 percent of it due to covid and other aspects so due to all these things coal utilization might rise in the coming year so that is also one uh, issue which we are going to cover next thing is incentives for banks to promote digital payments because now government had foc- uh, shifted his, its focus from uh, uh, co- completely digital based economy uh, he government wants to promote at the same time the changes which rbi had brought because of all these things so merchant bankers are uh, the middlemen who are there now government wants to remove those uh, people so that people won't be or uh, even small businesses won't get affected due to this reason government is going to give incentives to the banks to the tune of 2600 crores that is also one topic which we are going to cover so next thing is there is a like a pause to sign pertaining to increase in direct tax collections so almost 89% of the total estimates have been collected so that is also one thing which uh, had surfaced in the news next thing is there is a good news pertaining to rebound of uh, in index of industrial production iip especially on all the six sectors so this is also one thing which uh, which is a good sign next thing is public debt to rise fiscal deficit to shrink so this uh, this also because year on the moment fiscal deficit uh, per uh, like still it is there obviously government is going to borrow more that's the reason why public debt is uh, supposed to rise but government is thinking to contain fiscal deficit on compared to earlier year so because of covid government had uh, like given a package and how it wants to like uh, in the coming year how it wants to contain the fiscal deficit to what extent that we are going to discuss next thing is rise in government capital spending so in the last 9 months government capital spending has increased tremendously by 53% almost like from 4 14 lakh crore spending on uh, capital expenditure to uh, 21 lakh crore so that's a good sign so that also one thing we will be discussing next thing will be increase in trade deficit with china this is an alarming thing especially the manner in which the trade deficit had increased so you, we should be uh, one thing we should understand is one is the volume of trade has increased but the substantial rise is more due to increase in prices due to the covid impact in china the trade deficit had ballooned a lot more due to the increase in prices for example in pharma sector which almost uh, which almost imports around uh, 18 to 20 billion dollars that's the manner in which pharma imports 
raw materials or other things from china now the prices had almost increased by 25 to 30% so apart from the volumes volumes had increased su- substantially but the prices are the increase in prices led to huge increase in trade deficit that also we have to keep in mind the last thing is impact of india australia economic cooperation and trade agreement on pharma sector so this is one thing which has uh, come in news so these are the main aspects which we will be co- covering so coming to the first thing so polls in 2024 make it tough to cut subsidy bill that's what uh, moody's uh, had predicted so the high, high commodity prices will compel countries such as india to persist with food and fuel subsidies through 2023 and the upcoming general elections in early 2024 will make it difficult to reduce such support so one is elections another thing is india wants to like india wants to like uh, contain so that is one thing which will be kept in mind so next thing is uh, india wants to even contain the inflation that is also one of the reasons coming to next thing terming india as one of the countries that are still midstream in post pandemic recoveries moody said that its deep domestic funding access will help bear the enhanced interest burden expected due to higher interest rates across the world and a general risk aversion in global capital markets so deep domestic funding means the manner in which the domestic savings and the domestic uh, whatever deposits that are going to drive the economy that will help bear the enhanced interest burden expected due to higher interest rates across the world because us fed us fed had increased uh, interest rates for the uh, by huge margin because of almost 6.5% inflation in usa so that's the reason why us fed had increased interest rates and a general risk aversion in global capital markets because because of general risk aversion because everyone is saying recession is for example yesterday union minister had also said that uh, recession is going to hit india after june post june india might see a recessionary trend that's what it has been said so due to all these things due to a general risk aversion so global capital markets especially fias and fdis might think twice before investing in any country even in a growing country like uh, india so due to all these things what is going to drive is the deep domestic funding and the manner in which we want to strengthen our financial aspects so that's what this is all about so next thing pre poll budget unlikely to feature big reforms rural spending to rise so big reforms won't be expected because government won't be in a position to take huge risks and uh, government also wants to attract more number of voters that will be the priority for the government so goldman sachs sees higher allocation for welfare and infrastructure sectors that's where government would uh, give philip to the economy per se analysis of budgets and the polls over the 15 years shows trends increasing in capex allocation for rural jobs and housing so capital expenditure will be more for rural jobs as well as for housing sectors that's where uh, government can also attract voters and at the same time housing is like the dream of every individual that uh, that will also be focused typically current expenditures have seen higher outlays for education and healthcare because these are more or less they are revenue expenditures even in healthcare also even though there could be capital expenditure pertaining to buildings and even in education also schools but major outlay will be pertaining to the revenue expenditure so in the present budget there might be are mostly be, uh, based on the trends of the last past 15 years the focus will be more towards welfare and infrastructure next thing in 2018-19 defense capital expenditure was cut to 32% of the total from a four year average of 36% while welfare uh, spending rose from 8% four year uh, average to 19% in the same period of analysis so the thing is defense expenditure just before last elections had cut down by 32% the same thing is expected in this uh, 
year, budget year so that that funds could be like focused more towards rural jobs and housing so especially for welfare spending in the same period of analysis infra capex share rose to 40% from average of 29% because once government gives more push to infrastructure funding automatically it leads to creation of uh, more demand for labor as well as creation of jobs and other things so in a way rural jobs housing as well as normal uh, jobs for everyone will be focus rather than focusing on education and healthcare so as uh, government is going to face elections in the early 2024 next is pli to offer more soft for it hardware with ip designed in india so pli scheme for it sector and hardware manufacturing which could encourage use of ip generated in the country like i said no like uh, how semiconductors especially government wants to give lot of focus and importance to semiconductor sector so like how taiwan had attracted investments as well as taiwan had really become a global hub for uh, semiconductor foundries in the same manner government wants to give that kind of strategy and push for uh, ip generated hardware uh, with uh, uh, it generated hardware with ip designed in india would be included in the pli scheme india is putting government capital to work in actively catalyzing the indian india semiconductor ecosystem because nowhere in the world a government had given this kind of focus when compared to other countries like now even us had also pumped around 50 billion dollars around 50 billion dollars swaps are being given by us uh, to like catch up as well as to focus more on semiconductor sector in the same manner now government is also pumping its own government capital into this semiconductor ecosystem in do, doing so the above center is working to achieve in 5 years what most countries including china attempted to do over several de- decades but it's a very challenging and daunting task but in a positive manner if government is successful nothing will be like that and the investments will flow all the way towards india that is also one thing next thing utilities yearly coal need may rise 8% on renewable deficit so this renewable deficit had occurred mainly due to two aspects one is covid another thing is because of huge increase in input costs especially solar panels and other things and uh, india to ramp up domestic production of solar panels there is an import duty levied important customs duty levied on solar panels and the solar uh, cells to an extent of 40 and uh, 25% due to all these things domestic rates uh, imported prices have also rised to domestic rates so the cost of renewables or cost of investment on renewables has increased tremendously that is one thing second thing is there was a big debate especially central government had given a notification pertaining to like the one important thing you uh, like there is something called gross metering and net metering net metering so gross metering is something based on how many units you have generated solar uh, energy directly to the extent uh, depending on the uh, so so on those uh, units depending on the slabs direct uh, government will directly give that much credit whereas in net metering what government does no so here the thing is in uh, net metering at the end of the day government will be calculating like for example if you have generated 1000 units and you have utilized 500 units for home consumption 500 has been given to grid or you have utilized 500 un- you have consumed 1000 units from grid and you have utilized 500 units from renewable uh, energy or solar power regarding the net 500 only government will be calculating the rates based on the slabs but the slabs are in such a manner up to 100 or 250 slab rate will be 5 rupees per unit 250 to 500 it will be 7 rupees per uh, unit from 500 to 1000 it will be 9 rupees from more than 1000 it will be 10 rupees like that the rates will be so the once you are able to calculate the net out of this thing 
you will be restricted to the prices of 7 rupees is the benefit you would be given but you will be given a bill for 1000 rupees from 5000 to 9 uh, 500 to 1000 it will be 9 rupees so nine, your total bill will be calculated to an extent of this 9 rupees out of this 1000 units so 9 into uh, for, for first 250 it will be 5 from 250 to 500 it will be 7 the rest it will be calculated 9 fives are 40 so 4500 like that 4500 plus 250 into 7 uh, is like 1750 next for uh, first 250 it will be 1250 something like that so it will be in and around 3000 7500 in net metering minus so in gross metering it will be like 7000 will be calculated so everything will be calculated on the net basis in net metering you are going to get only lesser benefit when compared to gross metering so there is a big debate and government had uh, curtailed the entire thing in such a manner up to if you are able to install any solar capacity up to 500 kilowatt government had sustained gross metering more than that especially for industrial purpose you need more than one megawatt of power or something like that then you have to go by net metering so the return on investment for solar energy earlier it, the people used to get in three to four years when you go by gross metering on net metering you will be like five to seven years it would be taking due to all these aspects also the installed capacity or focus towards renewable energy has come down drastically so india added only 120 gigawatt of renewable energy to its power grid by 2022 short of its target of 175 gigawatt so miss 2022 renewable energy goal by more than 30 percent first thing second thing government expects to add 16 gigawatt of renewable energy in the next fiscal a 13 percent rise in the current year's installed capacity due to this deficit india expects its power plants to burn eight percent more coal that is one thing second thing at the same time an uptick in economic activity and the heat wave last year led led to surge in power demand especially post covid there is an uptick or increase in economic demand so government expects the same for the current year that is also one one thing further china and india together account for three-fourths of the electricity consumption in asia pacific so there will be demand for coal because of all these factors okay coming to this thing 2600 crore incentive for banks to promote digital payments in financial year 2021 there was an increase of 23 percent in digital payments vis-a-vis -vis previous year so there is a good chunk of 23 percent increase in digital payments in 2021 and 22 total digital payments valued at rupees 1744 lakh crores it's like transactions don't see it from economy perspective see someone will give, send one lakh to someone again he repays after some time he again gives back again he repays so every transaction will be considered as one thing so definitely these digital payments would are at times would cross the total gdp of the country so it is valued at 1744 lakh crores okay so the total payments that had undergone in the last financial year the incentive for fund will be paid to banks in the view of lack of merchant discount rate a commission on digital transactions for upa and rupee why because the moment someone is going to use the pos machine point of sale machine or anything or even whenever earlier any net banking transaction used to happen or credit card or debit card so this merchant discount rate would apply and this is what would be charged at banks that's why once you unless you have a very premium account you will be charged for the transactions or to maintain the account a minimum banking charges will be collected from you every year so now under digital payments to promote the digital payments even at the grassroots level what government is doing is that because now there is no more merchant discount rate a commission on digital payments even when they are using a pos machine for example banks have to incur this cost which banks are not, not ready to foot in this bill so that's the reason why government is giving the incentive 
so that a commission on digital uh, transactions would be paid by or reimbursed or incentivized by government that's what this is all about next thing government nets 87% of direct tax goal receipts hit rupees 12 lakh crore so personal income tax revenue grew faster than net corporate taxes rising 21.6% by jan 10th compared with corporate tax inflows which climbed 18.3% so there is an uptick of both corporate and personal income tax revenues but the increase is more in personal income tax front next thing is direct tax revenues reflect 19.6% growth over year earlier period that also one thing next thing refunds totaling 2.4 lakh crore issued till jan 10th recording a growth of 58% so when compared to 1.1 lakh crore refunds last year so the refunds have also increased to 2.4 lakh crores so that is a positive sign for the government next thing industrial output rebounded to 7.1% growth in november after october contraction so this is also one thing first uptick in the output of consumer durables non durables after a streak of contractions so production grew across all sub sectors for the first time since june 2022 so industrial iip both which has both consumer durables and non durables so had seen a positive trend or positive growth for the first time post june 2022 in comparison october had seen just two sectors registering expansion so when compared to october we had a very good positive sign in november iip showed a claw back in november but metrics were aided by a low base effect from the year earlier period so next thing is manufacturing grew 6.1% from 2021 so manufacturing has also grown to a healthy growth of 6.1% mining output accelerated from 2.5% in october to 9.7% that means economy is also picking up the movement mining sector has accelerated that means the total economic activity has accelerated that's what it's a good sign power generation climbed 12.7% in november but the total generation was 1.5% lower than in previous month because we will be comparing with last year's data also so when compared to last month so there is a lower power generation it could be because when winter had set in when compared to uh now uh, october winter had set in november so utilization of power would also come down when compared to what uh, people might be using that might be also one of the factors next thing is public debt to rise in financial year 2024 fiscal deficit to shrink in to 5.8 percent so because earlier uh, last year fiscal deficit is around 6.4 uh, percent so that means center is trying to rein in fiscal deficit or uh, bring it down by 0.6 uh, percent or 600 basis points so the gross market borrowings of center to rise to 14.8 lakh crore a rise of 0.7 lakh crore when compared to an year earlier so definitely because once there is a fiscal deficit government has to borrow more but the net fiscal deficit when compared to year earlier it is going to shrink by 0.6% that's what it is all about whereas that of states to jump by so the gross market borrowings of states to jump by 1.6 lakh crores to 9.6 lakh crore when compared to what it is earlier so that's the reason why combinedly the public debt is going to increase by almost uh, increase to 25.5 lakh crore but at the same time the fiscal deficit is going to shrink okay next thing is government rise in government spending pushes up investments by 53% so government investment projects in the first 9 months of financial year 23 have crossed rupees 21 lakh crore from 13.8 lakh crore last year so there is almost 53% increase in government uh, in uh, government focus on investment projects the share of government projects in increased in financially 2023 by around 7% points compared to financially 2022 while that of private sector 
had de- de- uh, declined one thing is the number of projects also in terms the invest in terms of investment there is a 53% increase at the same time the share of government projects one is capital spending at the same time the share of government projects has also increased by 7 percentage points so that's a good sign that but at the same time private sector investment has declined to an extent because they are more cautious because of the global trends and also due to the inflation and other aspects but government is trying to be the torch bearer and back and pertaining to focusing on capital spending especially on investment projects next thing india's trade deficit with china raises beyond 100 billion dollars so india's 2022 import from neighbor neighbors from neighbor or from china rises to 21% but exports to china contracted to 17.5 billion when compared to 28 billion dollars last year so the exports have contracted but uh, imports have increased so china's total foreign trade for the year surged to a record high by increasing 7.7% to 6.25 trillion see whereas indian trade indian total mercantile trade is around almost 750 to 800 billion 750 to 800 billion dollars total import and export so whereas china's foreign trade for the year surged to almost like our uh, imports are around 400 to 420 to 430 billion dollars exports uh, are around 350 billion dollars so that's like total it is around 800 billion dollars whereas that of foreign trade it is around whereas that china is around almost 8 to 10 times larger than india so it has grown to a record of 6.25 trillion that's like double our economy so bilateral trade had climbed 8.4 percent last year to 136 billion dollars so of that India's have imports accounted uh, for around 118.5 billion dollars of the two-way trade up from 97.5 billion dollars the previous year at the same time last year because we had uh, almost around 28 billion dollars that means our uh, net trade deficit is around only 70 billion dollars when compared to the present year where we have only 17.5 that means net it will be around 101 billion dollars so india's exports so in 2022 financially 2021-22 we had a fiscal we had a total trade deficit of around 101 billion dollars india's exports to china fell from 28 billion to 17.5 billion dollars so trade deficit wide into 101 up by 45 percent from the 70 billion dollars seen in 2021 so that's an alarming thing so last thing so australia deal could open more doors for indian pharma firms so australia is a 14.6 billion dollar pharma market with generics constituting 12 percent and over the counter products constituting 18 percent of the total market because this is where our focus is other other things are like uh, whatever import of apis intermediates other uh, exhibients and other things constitute other uh, sector so whatever generics and uh, over the counter constitute 30 percent of the market are around 5 billion dollars okay so so in 2021 indian pharma exports to australia were worth 387 million dollars so that is like only three percent of the total market of uh, market share of uh, australia the bilateral economic cooperation and trade agreement would give india market access what does market access means this is important because under the economic cooperation and trade agreement what would happen is that markets will open to an extent based on some norms that they have set so that there would be more ease of doing business or more ease of opening up of the markets further the most important breakthrough in the pact is fast tracking of clearances of pharma products by utilizing reports of comparable regulatory authorities from countries like US, UK, Japan and Canada. That's what market access means. What it means that whatever 
the kind of uh, like there is one clause no mfn clause will be there for example most favored nation most favored nation clause in that whatever treatment you are giving to the most favored nation for example australia is having a very good pharmaceutical deal or very good economic deal with usa pertaining to opening up of its economy so same deal could be replicated in the indian scenario if india follow all the standards that are mentioned in usa so that's what like the th- the pact is like fast tracking of clearance of pharma products by utilizing the reports of comparable regulatory authorities and you should we should understand that india has the largest number of us fda plants us fda pharma plants outside our rest of the world so india almost had the india is having the highest number of high india is having the highest number of uh, us fda plants across the world so uh, after usa so this will avoid duplication of factory inspection as 55% of the india's pharma exports go to highly regulated markets and it has the highest number of us fda approved facilities outside usa so due, due to these things because we are getting all the clearances from us fda the same thing could be utilized by india or could be showcased by india to show that to open up of australian economy so that we can focus on whatever gener- generic drugs of 12% are over the counter products of 18% are other apas and other things so with this i am concluding today's session but please go through these things so it's a good thing and uh, pharma sector is also being opened in australia okay with this i am concluding for today have a nice day bye